So now we're at the end of the case, and uh, in this scenario, we're ready to excavate the patient. We've got two out of four twitches. We still have a moderate level of block on board. Okay, we're going to press train of four to do our train of four count, and we're, we have two twitches there, two out of four. So what are the factors that we should consider in this situation if we're going to use neostigmine uh, as our reversal agent? Well, it, obvious, if you have two out of four, we obviously have fade. There's no question about that. Uh, at this depth of blockade, uh, we have two choices. We could wait till more spontaneous recovery, or we could go ahead with neostigmine and give a full dose of 70 mics per kilo. Understanding also that the onset of neostigmine is slow, that's a consideration we have to do. So at this point with this patient, and we're at the end of the case, go ahead and proceed with 70 mics per kilo, a full dose of neostigmine reversal. That's an interesting point you, you made because the, the onset really is pretty slow. How long do we have to wait? If we were, if we were using a quantitative monitor and, and we want to get to a point where the train of four ratio is above 0.9, how long would that take in a scenario like this, Glenn? There have been several studies that I've actually looked. When you have two twitches at the end of a case and you use a full reversal dose of 70 mics per kilo, it takes on average somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes to get back to a train of four ratio of 0.9 or greater. So the point where we can safely extubate the patient takes an average 20 to 30 minutes. The reality is most clinicians aren't waiting that long. Uh, studies have suggested that most clinicians believe from a, a train of four count of two, you can get back to full recovery within about 10 minutes using neostigmine, which isn't the case. And I think it's one of the primary reasons we see such a high incidence of residual block in the package, because neostigmine really is a fairly slow-acting drug. A second consideration is that there's huge variability in recovery times. So if you look at actually the interquartile range in most of these studies looking at recovery, it's very, very wide. So in some people, it may be as short as 10 minutes, and other people, it can be as long as two hours. So there's huge variability. And one of the problems, we don't know oftentimes where this person is in the recovery. Interesting, because what we're talking about here is going from two out of four twitches to four out of four twitches with a peripheral nerve stimulator. And that might happen in a 10 minute time span. But what we can't detect is that they're probably, with our naked eye or with feeling, is there probably still some level of blockade on board, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And it's interesting what we, we recommended here at two out of four twitches is to give a full 70 mics per kilo dose. On an average size patient, that's about five milligrams. Uh, there is a ceiling effect at 0.05, above which we're really not going to get more reversal at a larger dose. So uh, despite the fact that at two out of four we gave 70 mics, we're probably not seeing much more benefit from those additional dosage to the maximum. And that's a concern also. And as you said, we're going to get four out of four. We will not see the fade, whereas on quantifiable train of four monitors, we could actually measure that fade, which will be missed here. If I were to do 15 minutes after neostigmine, I'm likely to see all four twitches here. And to me, my interpretation would be they are four equal twitches. Okay. So now we've administered neostigmine. We've waited uh, uh, 20 to 25 minutes. And now we check the twitches again. And what can we expect to see in this scenario? Well, at this point, I would expect, even if there's a train of four ratio less than 0.9, I'm going to visually see equal train of four count. So I'm going to do a train of four count now. And they, again, four twitches, they do look equal to me. My interpretation is four out of four equal. The quantifiable monitor may have to tell us differently. Okay, now we have the, the TOF watch attached here. We're going to turn, turn this on and me take a measurement here. And again, we see here we have a uh, a uh, train of four ratio of 104 percent, which which was actually what his baseline was. So now we know, we're assured that this patient has full recovery. He's not one of those outliers that lies maybe in the recovery time period of uh, 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 90 or 100 minutes. So I think at this point, with a demonstration of a full recovery, we can safely remove the endotracheal tube and not worry about residual uh, paralysis affecting the airway muscles. And, that, and that's a good point. We have an ASA1 healthy young male here, as opposed to some of our other patients, which are older, elderly, kexic, neuromuscular diseases, have coexisting diseases. So in a scenario of a year, very strong, young, healthy ASA1 patient, I would expect a better response from neostigmine uh, as opposed to an older patient who has some comorbidities that we'd be much more concerned about.
And again, I think those are the kind of patients, too, that are going to be at high risk for complications from residual block. Again, our young, healthy ASA 1 and 2 patients, they have residual block, they'll probably do fine. However, the patients you talk about, again, those patients with limited physiologic reserve are the ones who are likely to get in trouble. Absolutely. And those including obese, obstructive sleep apnea patients, again, the cachexic, the elderly, and those with neuromuscular diseases.